opportunity you have to speak. So if you could not interrupt during the rest of the debate, um, I'm sure you're not going to clap, cheer, his boo, or stand up, because you don't look that tight, um, if there is a type. And you'll see officers are talking along here during the, while you're talking, which looks extremely bad mannered. Um, we're trying to get an answer for the points that you're raising, that's why we're talking. If not, we'd have to wait and talk about it after you've finished, which would take an awful long time. Um, update on performance. Same as last time, Chairman. So 6% appeals, which determines um, major appeals. Yeah. And 85% of yeah. major applications determined on time. All right, so the council is good at Doing things at the moment. Okay, we go to the first application. When I get to it, which is in Stone Iron Churches Parish, and the number is 1164. Over to you, Owen. Thanks, Chairman. Um, I don't propose to go through the report in, in a lot of detail. Um, I would refer members also to the late representations. Uh, some further comments from the applicant and the officer's response to that. Um, just wait for the, uh, the master plan to move on. Just move on the master plan. Don't you get there eventually? I mean, essentially, this is a pro this is a proposal which sits outside the normal planning policies in terms of development control and uh, the development plan. Um, it's relying entirely on paragraph 55 of the National Planning Policy Framework. And if I quote that, uh, it's paragraph 55 due to residential development. To promote sustainable development in rural areas, housing should be located where it will enhance or maintain the vitality of rural communities. It then goes on to say that local planning authorities should avoid isolated new homes in the countryside unless there are special circumstances, such as, and that lists a, a series of criteria, uh, one of which is the exceptional quality or innovative nature of the design of the dwelling. Such a design should be truly outstanding, innovative, helping to raise standards of design more generally in rural areas, reflect the highest standards in architecture, significantly enhance its immediate setting and be sensitive to the defining characteristics of the local area. I think the report uh, assesses the application against that, those particular criteria, but also takes account of the representations of uh, statutory consultees, including the Highway Authority, <coughs> and the advice of OPEN, uh, which is a, a body that the Council does seek uh, advice from in respect to paragraph 55 others. And members may well be aware in previous applications uh, the advice of open has been sought as well. 
it's an organization of, uh, of uh, professionals who specialize in looking at this type of development. And they have been engaged both prior to the application being submitted and uh, in the course of the application, and their, their views are set out in the report. Suffice it to say, they, they judge the proposal to be compliant with provisions of uh, paragraph 55 in terms of meeting those criteria. And that's something that we give quite a significant weight to in the report. Uh, other considerations uh, that have been raised with respect to the local area uh, primarily relate to highway safety. And you can see that the advice of the highway authority was sought and was the subject of quite extensive discussions between the applicants, uh, which ultimately resulted in the highway authority removing uh, its objection and raising no objection subject to conditions to secure uh, off uh, off-site highway works, including the provision of a passing bay uh, on the local highway to improve and mitigate the impact of the development on the local highway network. Turning to the design, uh, I mean this proposal seeks to uh, sit the development within the, the contours of the landscape using just two, yeah, just leave it on that. So you can, I mean, as you'll see from the master plan, the, the, the site is a quite a sort of steep facing valley. And the proposal seeks to sit within that valley using the contours, effectively building retaining walls against the uh, against the contours and producing uh, single uh, facade building. Uh, to the right hand side of that particular drawing is the main residence, and to the left hand side is a, is a what would be referred to as a granny annex with ancillary uh, parking. Um, the proposal, as I say, in our view, meets the criteria set out in paragraph 55. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, we're recommending the application be approved, Chairman. Um, I'll leave it to members to, to come back in terms of any other questions and what we'll try and answer. Thank you, Ayman. We have three speakers. First of all, Mr. Sanderson, who's against the application. Okay, I'm the sort of representative of the British Council. British Council is allowed to speak first. No, that's the second person. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay. 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 Well, um, we had, I had some photos submitted, but I don't know if they're available before I speak, so I don't have to interrupt. Mr. Hayne. Computer's a bit slow tonight, that's all. Yeah, so just, I thought it'd be, get them up so it doesn't interrupt when I start speaking. We'll start in there then. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll deal with the traffic first. Uh, a gentleman said that it's been referred to the Northampton Highways Authority, but the photograph shown of Northfield Lane was shown it as a clear road. But this is actually what happens in practice. And uh, this is a situation where a car encountered a van, and then within a couple of minutes, two cars appeared from either direction. And the only way that the vehicles could uh, get out of the way was to reverse back down the road. And uh, there were uh, five blind corners on that road, so therefore we contend that one passing bay isn't sufficient to deal with it. We'd also like to point out that children cycle, walk dogs, and there are other dog walkers. So we're concerned for the safety of the children of the village, that if they cycle down that road and encounter a large construction vehicle, that their uh, safety is in danger. Uh, going back to the paragraph 55 point, we um, maintain that uh, it isn't totally in keeping with the local vernacular. <coughs> as you approach the village, you see the new development and the uh, existing housing behind it, as, it, as the uh, report says. And, uh, for example, the street block range is the 18th century, or the beginning of the 18th century, and the, the new development looks out of character with the rest of the village as you approach the village. And we'd also say that a modernist design may look great now, but how would it look in 20, 40 years' time? If you think of the Northampton bus station that's largely ridiculed, it was a modern design when it was built. And a lot of contemporary designs look fairly unsuitable in, say, 40 years' time. So we'd like to say that that doesn't seem to have been considered as has the child safety aspect. Um, in the report it talks about the risk of burglary uh, to the building, but there's nothing about the increased risk of burglary to existing residents um, due to the development work and increased likelihood of visitors, especially as it being an entity's design. There may well be people who want to come and look at the property, which uh, as you can see there's no uh, parking on that Northfield Lane site. So we believe that it's going to impair the quality of life of the village. We'd also like to point out that a number of villages have open air events like barbecues. We sometimes have singing events. 
and we don't want to be in a position where we offend the new neighbours by holding these events. Um, so we would ask you to. We also want to know how the council plans to implement things like the guest annex shouldn't be sold as a separate property if they have pro problems selling the property. We also want to know how the council plan to enforce the judgment that the vehicle should only come up Northfield Lane and not the existing road that's already heavily used by agricultural and large vehicles, Leeds Hill. We also were somewhat put out in the house that uh, we've been receiving posts from Mr R. Wright of Sheepfold Grange, uh, which implies that he's actually resident there. So we'd like uh, the agent to explain why various organisations think he might be resident of our property. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr Fielder is the Parish Council, representing the Parish Council. I'm deputed to represent Stone Nine Church's Parish Council. The Parish Council see this development as a distinct in, 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 intrusion into the countryside and an, 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 an unwarranted extension of the village curtilage, which we have jealously preserved over many years and that has been upheld by preceding uh, planning authorities. The Grange, as mentioned, is uh, a sentinel and indicating the uh, easternmost corner of the village, round by its old brick wall, and so any e extension outside the village curtilage is totally unwarranted. The comments of the planning officer largely disregard our own in favour of those made by an applicant, backed up by fairly powerful parties. Who is the applicant? Mr. Wright crops up quite often in DDC area applications. Who is he? Mr. Wright is a member of the Goliath Group of Oldby Leicestershire. They have an impressive website. Also the applicant in Mary Tom Lane, which you will have dealt with previously. Goliath state quite clearly, and I quote, work closely, uh, closely with local authorities and open who are they actually serving? Can they ethically serve two masters? Who are open? An overtly commercial undertaking, working with and advising local authorities with expertise on unusual designs. How close and how involved are open with local authorities? Can they impartially serve two masters? This application is seen as purely speculative, with no end occupier yet in sight, and so the requirements of the, for the site may be altered at any time, and we would question how the council would uh, supervise that. Excuse me, sir, would you speak up just a little? Sure. Thank you. Having successfully preserved our village boundary over so many years, we are now faced with its demise by use of a paragraph 55 application. Apparently a convenient way around, and one recently finding all too frequent use for the wrong reasons. We submit the de development is of no special architectural merit. Comments made by Open to which much weight seems to have been uh, attached, are in our opinion at least at best fanciful and have little bearing on the matter and more by way of architectural jargon speaking. The proposal will, sub will submit any, sorry, the proposal will not, we submit, in any way enhance or contribute to its surroundings. Could quite, you wind up that, quite, Thank you. quite the contrary. It is seen merely as an attempt to glorify a property which is considered a scar and a beautiful part of the rural la landscape in order merely to obtain consent via paragraph 55 and thereby impose irreparable damage for all time to our village. Its design is of little architectural merit other than being quirky. We ask this matter to be given your serious consideration 
and we ask that you refuse this application. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Brown, who's the agent? Yes, thank you. I'm the architect, actually. Yes. Um, it's perhaps worth just reminding members what, what paragraph 55 is about and where it originally came from. Paragraph 55 sits there as an exceptions policy to allow for new buildings to be constructed in the open countryside. It's a very rare application which has been approved nationally, very rarely, um, and nearly all of the applications, which we've been involved in quite a number nationally over the whole country, in steering them through both planning committee and through appeal, have all been uh, approved first, or sought the approval of first, through a design review panel. The design review panel process has been set up nationally through the through CABE originally, and now that has been devolved down through the Royal Institute of British Architects to, to be, become an advisory body to the council. It sits there as an independent body. It's, it's funded by the applicant paying the independent body, but with, there is no influence over the body whatsoever. It sits there as an independent organization which advises local authorities. And we have to, and always have, with these applications, have to satisfy their requirements. This panel that we've been working with now for, for some time, for nearly a year, we've been to the panel a number of times, and we've sought their full approval, and they've given us a letter stating that we've met entirely the requirements of paragraph 55. And paragraph 55 says that the, the design must be truly outstanding or innovative. The design and access statement, which hopefully you've had a chance to look at, makes it very clear that the building is truly outstanding and both innovative as well. Innovative in terms of the technology that we're using in the building and the way that the building is responding to the landscape itself. In addition, the paragraph says it should make it significantly enhance its immediate setting. What is the immediate setting of this, 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 this house? Well, basically it's a field. Enhancing the setting, but basically lifting the field and putting the field onto the roof of the building. Enhancing that setting, or actually enhancing the biodiversity of the setting. It doesn't always mean en enhancing the village itself or responding to the characteristics of the village itself. Because many of these applications don't sit within the context of the village. So, the enhancement in this case is actually enhancing the biodiversity by changing the character of the meadow itself and introducing water bodies, which again will increase the biodiversity. So, it's an unarguable point is that the, 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 there will be an enhancement, both we believe visually to the village and to the setting, and both to the biodiversity. We also are required to be sensitive, sensitive to, to, the, to respond to the defining character, characteristics of the rural area. I've just prepared this. The building itself was evolved from this image here, which actually created, the, if you look at the, the landscape in the wider context, what you have is a series of buildings broken up to a series of lenses, which are captured between field lines, and the whole building responds directly to that. In addition, we've been very careful to use materials which are surrounding the site itself. So the materials that we use, the meadows lifted up to create the roof of the building, green roof system, that will enhance diversity. The materials of the building itself use natural stone, use the natural vernacular of the area. Could you want it as well, please? That's it. And the inspiration is to have, a, a, from a feather we found on the site, in fact, is to have something which sits very gently and flows over the landscape. The landscape flows down and through the building to create something which is absolutely, as often agreed, is exceptional and beautiful and will not just enhance the, this local area, but actually it will be seen on a national stage. What you're doing here is proving something which will actually be a true brand design in a national context. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right, local member, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's nice to be told how fantastic this will be. I know the area very, very well, and I cycle that particular route. My daughter had the delight of actually being on the school bus because of an accident on the North Hill Lane as well. Um, so I have an intimate knowledge of the area. 
And I had to say, I don't agree with uh, officers' advice, unfortunately. Um, I don't believe this is truly outstanding. I don't think we've seen enough. We, we, we've seen sort of blurred images of, of what we're going to actually have built there should this go through. I mean, I look great in the morning and you squint. Um, this, to me, was every telling to the land person. Um, I don't think it enhances the media setting, I think it detracts from it. Um, <coughs> Stone Nine Church is, is split across two hamlets. Um, I don't see any significant um, improvement coming from this, but I don't believe it's sensitive to the, uh, to the actual uh, geography either. Um, there's talk of the, of the, the roof um, being part of the field, maybe the field is on top of it entirely, it would be more acceptable, but it's not. Um, I don't support this um, application at all, and I'd like to propose that we go against officer's advice under HS24. Thank you. What's your plan, Mason? Sorry? Uh, HS24, I don't believe it sits within paragraph 55. Okay. Do you have a second? No. No second, do this one, mind. Oh, who is a second? The council, thank you. I'll speak later, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, it's open for debate. <coughs> Councillor Patchy. There's another local member. Well, there's another the local, the local member, Chairman. Councillor I beg your <laughs> I am very, very sorry, sir. <laughs> Apologies. You are the other yeah. local member, and you can go next. I do. Sat quietly in the corner. <laughs> um, right, as the uh, report. Uh, you please. should be sitting over there, Mark. I apologise. Uh, the report clearly sets out that um, the crux of the matter here is paragraph 55. So, um, if you'll permit me, Chair, I'd like to go through paragraph 55 and uh, just the points and pairs, actually. Um, the first two points um, set out that the application should be uh, truly outstanding and innovative and reflect the highest standards in architecture. Um, I would contend, as Councillor Smith did, that uh, at this stage we simply don't know. The pictures provided are from sufficient clarity and essentially uh, members of the planning committee are being asked to approve this application uh, on the basis of artist's impressions rather than anything that gives an accurate portrayal of how the building will, will be in a finished state. Uh, secondly, addressing the last two points in paragraph 55, uh, they state that it, the application should significantly enhance the immediate, immediate setting and be sensitive to the defining characteristics of the local area. Um, I believe uh, Mr Brown, the architect, um, said that the plan would enhance the, the immediate setting. Uh, I would contend that his definition of enhancement is merely an alteration uh, and would not uh, enhance the local surrounding. The, one of the reports referenced uh, in, in, in the report uh, in front of us um, sets out that the local landscape is typified by large and open fields and highly visible uh, in the surrounding area. Uh, this would obviously be altered significantly should this uh, application go ahead. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, as Councillor Smith sets out, um, Upper Stow, uh, on the edge of which this uh, application will be set, uh, is a small hamlet. It's of uh, a picturesque quality, and this would uh, not uh, comply or be sensitive to defining characteristics, uh, in my opinion. Thank you. I'm sorry I missed you. <coughs> right. Um, Councillor Patterson, did you want to speak, or, or were you just telling me that? Uh, well, no, I would like to speak, Chairman. Yes, I would like to speak now. I mean, with, with these things, it is, it is uh, subjective and, and a matter of personal opinion as to whether you, 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 you think it is advice for the policy or not. And just, just one uh, question, really. I, I noticed on the, on the photographs that there's uh, uh, some brickwork that's with a disused building. I just wonder if there's any information with regards to that. Uh, yeah, for you, Chairman, Ed, that's uh, an old agricultural building. It actually sits outside of the application site. It actually sits well to the, uh, to the site of the application site. It used to be a sheet pen, it's the sheet pen. Okay, Councillor Irving, sir. Uh, yes, um, we are on Prince Charles territory here. Uh, we like or we dislike uh, monoculture or not. Um, it, is, it is very, very difficult. Last time we had uh, 
the previous planning application, uh, we refused um, with a paragraph 55, which is a pastiche. Here we have something very modern. Uh, I will agree with um, the fact that we might not have all the details of so far, just an impression, an artist impression. And um, uh, with that, uh, would it be possible to have uh, something better to defer till we have something better in the old, or just a drawing? Because I think that is the thing we cannot really see, and that's, I think that was the, the problem of the two councillors, that this was, it was just an artist impression and not an architect drawing. Is that enough for us? I agree you, Chairman. We've, uh, we don't ever provide all the information to the planning committee, but it, is all been, it has all been provided. We've got the file here. All the, people, all the pictures and architectural documents are included on the website. We obviously look at the reading selection because there's many, many more things available. They're not on the website. Again, we've got some. Again, through you, Chairman, condition two sets out quite a detailed list of, uh, of, of the drawings that are uh, before members for consideration of the drawings are. Well, there, um, where there are matters of detail that, that, that are required, they are dealt with by way of condition, and, and that's a perfectly acceptable way of, of dealing with, with applications. Uh, <coughs> those matters of detail don't go to the heart of the Commission. But ultimately, you're being asked to determine this application against, uh, as an exception to your normal planning policy, uh, under paragraph 55. Um, we judge, and indeed, uh, the, the body that we've used to advise the council judges there to be sufficient detail to assess it against our paragraph. Clearly, if members feel that there isn't, uh, then maybe you have an option of, of deferring it, but I'm not sure what additional detail that you would want other than perhaps photographic montages of how it might sit in the landscape or whatever. Um, but the proposition before members at the moment is, is to refuse the application. We may come back on that chairman of offered the opportunity. So, so could, I, could I ask two more things? Because last time we took a, we put a great emphasis on open and and we we refused because it wasn't. And this time um, the one gentleman also made a point that as the building, if we are minded to go against the first proposal, that the building uh, the ancillary building could not be set separately, could we, if the motion is defeated, could we change the condition, but that's maybe for a letter, uh, if the vote is, the first vote is lost, that we don't forget on the second vote, that we put a condition, yeah. which I think it was, but just to make sure, I think it was. Through you, Chairman, just um, I think to clarify your point, are you asking about conditioning to make sure that the property, if it is approved, that it's one dwelling? Yeah. And I think and, it was uh, in the condition, but just to satisfy your mm -hmm. parish. Well, again, it's, the application is for a single dwelling, mm -hmm. with uh, an ancillary annex, and there's conditions on there to, to require that to be set. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just one technical question first. Is, the land, is, is, is it an SLA or uh, anything of that nature? Again, for you, Chairman, it is a special landscape area. And as the report sets out, it's identified under the planning under policy EM1. I couldn't you say okay. say mm -hmm. and I, I have to say, the reason I seconded this was because I feel that there is not enough information here. I'm, I'm uncomfortable not necessarily with the technical details, but how it appears to sit, sit in the landscape, and there is no indication from these sorts of, um, uh, I guess you call them, uh, uh, 3D images of how this will actually look in the supposed position that they're putting it. And I would agree with Councillor Irving Swift if we could see a bit more information. And I think that information should have been on the website then we would not be where we are. And I think a lot of councillors would have a much clearer idea of where they stand on this issue. And I can see he's waving things around. But can you stop doing that, please? Because we're talking to the chairman. So I would, I would quite like to see more information of how the building sits in the landscape. Um, is that a view 
just give me a straw poll. Is that of you that's being expressed by several members? Just yeah. think out of it yeah. if that is so. Yeah. It's been, that's a view being expressed by half of you. Um, I mean, we need a proposition. It could be deferred so that you can get every bit of information you need uh, that you require that you say that you haven't got I would be happy so you can make a better decision. I would be happy to propose that, Chair. Yeah. Well, we've got to deal with the first one first. So, um, well, it affects that. But you don't have a proposal. You, if you've got, you've got a motion, an amended motion to defer, you deal with that first. My, my concern about members doing this is, uh, I'm assuming, therefore, members have actually, who have these concerns, have gone and looked at the planning file, which has been available since you had the papers, which had all of that. To work. Even, mm -hmm. even if you can't always rely on the website. And if members are raising this at this late stage, you are placing yourselves in a difficult position on any challenge to this decision. So I, I, I put that as a note for but definitely the deferral recommendation should be taken. I, I would just like to take issue with that view because we as members are live in various places and we are led by the both the papers we're given and the website that the public can look at. And if the information isn't on there, it shouldn't be up to us to have to go delving and diving for it. It should be presented to us. If it's a concern that members are raising now, it's clearly a concern that members have before, but it should have been raised with planning off the But we weren't aware that there was that information available. So you, you don't know what you don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I can see both, both sides of your argument. What you're saying, our legal man, is that I should take the amendment that yes. should be made um, for, for deferring it. Yeah. Uh, three chief, three chairman, if members do desire to defer the application for more information, we could, um, we could talk to Declan to get about getting more information and potentially also arrange a site visit to understand the application in its context. I think that's a good idea, well, Chair. Yeah. I'll like to come back in a minute, but. We'll, we'll vote on the proposal that it be deferred for more comprehensive um, information and you can even have a site visit as well at the same time so you've got the full facts in front of you. Excuse me, Chairman, has the first proposal to refuse it been withdrawn? No, 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 it hasn't. No. I've just we've been, been told. the amendment first. Okay. I've just been told to take the amendment first. So we have a proposal that the application be deferred for more information and a site visit. All those in favour, please show. Three, four, four. Those against? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that motion is lost. So you want, I said I'd come back to you for the debate on the original motion. Yeah, okay. That's right. Okay, thanks Chairman. Um, I went through the website. I, as far as I'm concerned, I found everything that I wanted to know. Um, the more I read about it, the more I read about this, the more interest I got in it. Um, the drawings, okay, they're top not as good as some of the ones we have. But this is a first off. I can't go out and take pictures and say this is what it's going to be like. Um, I will kind of give a very good report on it. This building is going to be carbon neutral, it's going to have ground source in heat pumps, and they're going for code 6, which I don't think we have made it come up to code 6. Um, I'm a fan of these ground design programs, and I'll sit and watch them, and I look at them, I think how great they are, and I think we'd never pass anything like that in Dumbledore District. Well, I think this is one we should pass. I'm all for it, and I'll go along and propose that we, we um, accept this, go with opposite advice. Okay, Councillor Paul. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I have to concur with my colleague. At the same time, I concur with the, um, the views of the locals, with, uh, the local members, with regard to open countryside. Etc. Now we, we, we have a problem. Is this an exceptional building? Um, at face value, 
Um, it is an exceptional building. Um, about a quarter of, well, not even a quarter of a mile away from here, there are two buildings with grass roofs. And if you go a little bit further, there's a third building with a grass or roof or a green roof in vertical. Um, the design ticks boxes with me. Um, you know, the, the, the man that uh, built the village at uh, Porth Merrin in, in, in Wales uh, was looked upon as, as an absolute lunatic. Um, but it's an outstanding feature of, of that area. Um, one of the um, local objectors <coughs> mentioned construction traffic. Well, construction traffic goes away after a short time. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they are careful, shall we say, or they, they can be made to be careful. I think it is outstanding architecturally. And the elements that you can see will be using local stone. So what we're going to be looking at is local stone, um, <coughs> grass across the roof, which ticks the boxes with regards to this council's green ethos. Um, my colleague has already mentioned the, the, the carbon neutral. Um, it is a difficult decision I can totally see where, where people are coming from. However, however, I, I can't hang my hat on anything that would win an appeal if we refused it. And that's the problem that I have. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll wait to him. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Councillor Wesley, I think you put your hand up. No, oh, it's been covered. Thank okay. You. Yes, sir. No, that, thank you, Chair. Um, basically, my concern is, I, I actually agree with my colleagues here that this is quite an exceptional design, but I still don't think it's strong enough. I think it's an interesting design, but I think I've seen this design elsewhere. And um, my personal view is that it needs to be a stronger design than that if we're going to approve it for open countryside, which is effectively what we're going to do. We do it. Any more comments? Sorry. Yes, Councillor Parker. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yes, I just going to confirm what the previous uh, councillor said. Um, it's exceptional, but it's not truly outstanding, which is what Para 55 says. So I don't think it is at all. Um, I think some of the things that were said, putting a lawn on top of the house. I just don't follow that one to save my life, that that's going to be the be all and end all of things. That doesn't make sense at all. And the architect, I think he said, I might be wrong, it would increase biodiversity. Um, again, that seems to be a new one to me on planning matters. And also, I think he said, I might be wrong here, he said he found a feather on the landscape, which is what you see in front of you. Um, I dread to think if he found something else, what we'd be looking at. <laughs> um, so I don't see that it does. It's, it's not exceptional at all. Uh, it's not truly outstanding. And I believe because it's in an SLA, it's out of the sight, the confines of the village, uh, I'm prepared not to go with officer's advice, although I do, he does state that things are subjective in this area and he's probably very right, but I think the opposite is true as well, that you can go against it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Eamon, you wish to say something? Yeah, I just want to come back on the biodiversity thing. I mean, it's not simply putting a grass roof on a house that, 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 that's uh, the key factor here. It's across the whole site. Uh, and there are planning policies that uh, require the local planning authority to take account when we get development. Uh, most notably how the impact on uh, the, the, uh, the ecology of a local area and where there are opportunities to enhance the ecology of a local area. That, that is a policy requirement and it uh, dissatisfies the, those particular policy aspects. So it's simply not about putting a grass for, for a lawn uh, on the house. Uh, in terms of the design features, again, you know, 
this proposal works with the contours, it creates retaining walls. Can you just call it the photograph? I mean, the adjoining property, Sheepfold Grants, is a, is a spectacular uh, retaining wall feature, which is part of the local his, his, historic uh, of, of the village itself. And, um, yeah, just to respect that. I mean, that, that's part of the inspiration, as I understand it, for this proposal, is using retaining walls to, to, to feed into the, the contours of the landscape and then to build off those to create single facade uh, dwelling and then obviously to, to, to integrate that with the, the surrounding landscapes will be the grassroots, etc. Plus the additional planting that goes around the site in terms of pulling it down into the landscape and integrating it with the wider landscape. So simply to say sticking a grass from the form is not a biodiversity opportunity, it's simply incorrect if you look across the, the wider proposal here. Um, can I also, Chair, come back in respect to the reasons for refusal? Or yes, we have to do, do that later. Uh, um, do, it, do it now before we manage. This, this is an exception to policy, it's an exception to development plan policy, and we assess it against paragraph 55. Therefore, simply to quote a conflict with a saved policy, um, I'm afraid it's simply insufficient in, in setting up the Council's position of your mind to refuse the application. You have a joint core strategy, which is the most up-to-date part of the development <coughs> plan. It was adopted in 2014. There are policies in there that relate to the distribution of housing, etc. They also deal with landscape, and they deal with biodiversity, and heritage, etc. So you need to be uh, wary of those more up-to-date policies, as, as, as well as uh, HS24. Plus, you have to at least demonstrate that you've had regard to paragraph 55 and set out why you judge this proposal not to comply with the criteria in that policy. Mm -hmm. Clearly, if you're, not, if you're saying it's not an exception, then the other policies fall into place, the normal development plan policies are engaged. But your starting point, I think, should be paragraph 55 and say, you know, we as a council don't accept this as an exception to, to the normal rule, shall we say. So back to you, proposal. Before we do vote on, do you want to um, add or alter your um, reasons? No, I don't believe it sits in paragraph 55. It's, it's, I believe it's HS24 kicks in on this one. Right? So are you saying you don't think it is an exception? No, I don't think it's it should be classed as an exception. No, I don't think it should be classed as one. Chairman, I think we really do need to know why. You've got those criteria <coughs> set out in paragraph 51. Okay, then I don't you have to go through them one by one and say yes or no. I don't believe it reflects the high standard architecture. I don't believe it significantly enhances the immediate setting. I don't believe it's sensitive um, in its defining uh, characteristics to the setting. I don't want that down, Chair. Do we have it again? It doesn't make the high standard of architecture. Chairman, may I ask a question for clarification? Well, let's get, let's get this we point. Need to get, we do need to get this right, Chairman. Let's get, let's get these points right. If we go to planning field, we have to, we have to know what and plans there are some have here in some location. So I need to know really. Okay. So, in fact, not a high standard of architecture. So it needs yeah, to be pretty outstanding or innovative, helping to raise the standards of design or generally rural areas. So I don't it's not outstanding or innovative. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the word. Okay, does the second expect um, accept those reasons as well? Yes, there's one about landscape. There's one about not enhancing its setting as well. Yeah. Is that something we have? Yeah. You're happy to have that in the proposal as well? Okay. Right, now several hands went up. First of all, Councillor Chantler. Uh, yes, my hand went up, Chairman, when uh, I heard a colleague say that he didn't believe it was architecturally outstanding. I wondered what qualified him to make a statement like that. If it's just a matter of personal belief, then people are entitled to their personal belief, but it can be very difficult to defend them. Unfortunately, we're all that supported as well. We're all lay people, and um, that's his view, that's his view. Uh, but um, probably he's not qualified, but uh, that's his layman's view. Uh, right, Councillor Paul, you put your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, what 
I couldn't gain from the drawings on, on the web was how much of the dwelling is actually buried into the yes, it's all right to say we're taking as the ground down, but there, there is an element which theoretically should will be into the hill. And, uh, I think that that, that, that shows it uh, in a more detail. Basically, the the one section. If you go back to that previous one, that, 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 sec that section. Basically, there's a series of retaining walls that will be built uh, in, into to create uh, fairly low terraces, and they'll build off those to create effectively single room depth uh, sort of modules, as it were, which will be linked as it go, goes up the hillside. So each individual is no, no higher than a single story, mm -hmm. flat roof. Um, and and if you actually see the middle, the, the central sort of uh, nodule, as it were, I mean, that sits between the two. So from bottom to top, it's, it's no higher than a modest two story dwelling, yeah, no. I, I would suggest. I understand, Ivan, but if the two people are sitting on a bench in front of the house um, that have just disappeared, when we go back to that, that one, the two people sitting in the bed there, if you, if you go horizontally to the back room of the house, yeah, roughly where the cursor is now. Yeah. They're, not, they're, yeah. not digging, they're not digging into the hillside, no. they're creating, they're not, they're, they're creating yeah. terraces uh, and using retainer structures against which they'll build. Yeah, I've got the impression so that they're, they're actually going down yeah, into not, the hill. We're not right. burrowing into the side right. of the house, okay. certainly that's my understanding. All right, thank you. You know, as I say, these retaining walls take their take their cue from the, the adjoining neighbouring property yeah. at Sheepfold uh, Grange. Right, before we go to the boat, did any anybody else want to raise anything new? No, there hasn't been said already, but they haven't said anything. Or they haven't said anything at all. Anybody else wish to say anything? That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you can't, because uh, we're going to the boat. So we've got a proposal, the application um, be refused for the given reasons a few minutes ago, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Those against. Right. Do we need to go the other way? Yeah. So I need a proposal. I did propose it, yes. Yes, well, we could, I couldn't accept it until the other one was done. So you propose the application be approved. Do you have a second one? Yeah. Councillor Chancellor. All those in favour, please show. As against. Right, the application is approved. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, this 
proposal is a two-storey uh, side extension uh, and a small rear extension to link into, into the existing uh, single-storey garage. Um, there's a small lean-to extension on the front. Um, the original application came in was flush with the, the front of the property. We've asked the applicant to set it back to uh, try and uh, provide a bit more definition to the, uh, the extension. Uh, and they have done that. Um, Parish Council uh, initially raised no objections but uh, have, have raised concerns about the impact on the community of the neighbouring property. But if you look at the photographs, there's a side facing kitchen window uh, on the side gable. Our view, and again, it's a, it's, it's a matter of planning judgment and, and, and balancing it, is yes, there will be an impact uh, on the immunity of that, that, that particular window, but not sufficient to warrant refusing the application. Uh, and accordingly, we recommend the application be approved, Chair. Thank you, Aaron. We have no speakers, so local member, uh, Councillor Smith. Hello again. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's always difficult when you've got a neighbour who's not in favour of an application such as this. Um, property sits north south of the garden, south facing. Um, is it south facing? Yeah, yes, it is south facing, yes. Um, so I think, yes, there will be some, some loss of light there um, in the evening. Um, tricky one. Uh, I'd rather hear what my colleagues have to say on this. Again, through you, Chairman, there wouldn't be any loss of light to the rear garden uh, as a result of this, which is the main private immunity area. Uh, there would the potential impact on the side, uh, the side driveway, which you'll see from the photographs. The private immunity area of the neighbouring property would be much affected. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm deferring to your best knowledge on, on this case. Councillor Robson. Chair, thank you. I, I'm just going to say this looks like a fairly straightforward and simple um, application for a householder. And uh, I can't see any really strong objections to it. Uh, let me show up to speak. Um, and therefore, I'm only to propose that we accept officers' advice. Do you have a second that? The first time I think was Councillor Chant was several came up. Unless you were scratching your nose, Councillor <coughs> No, I wouldn't do that, Chairman. Oh, okay. Did you wish to speak? No, thank you, Chairman. Okay. Um, anybody else wish to say anything? If not, we'll go to the vote. We've got a proposal that officer is advised be support and the application be approved. Those in favour, please show. Be unanimous. Okay. The application is approved. <coughs> Next application is in Pittsburgh, 0402. Actually, Chairman, um, I think you'll find it's in Brampton's parish, but I don't know. It's, 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 it's in Pittsburgh. Is it in Pittsburgh? Well, that's what it says on my bit. I know, they always get it wrong. It's and one application recently, we were not informed it was coming to committee, so it went through without our knowledge. Oh, right. So they get confused. It's the stream that is the boundary. I'll stand corrected, Chairman. We have this I accept the Chairman of the Parish Councils. <laughs> uh, she, she would know. Clark. I say we've had this issue. Clark. I'm now with Clark. With Clark, I mean, yes. I say we've had this issue with Chairman this area. At the end of the day, your truth. Um, <laughs> basically, whichever parish you've seen anyway, it's between Pittsford and Chapel Rampton on that road, Brampton Hall, Perth, which you may be aware of, adjacent to the um, Heritage Railway there, and they tend to trade off that, which is why part of the proposal is to provide a new canopy over the existing barbecue area that looks like a railway um, platform station canopy. With railway type features, and also they want to replace some of the uh, wooden seating that's more traditional pub seating where you've got tables and wooden seats with these little what I would call plate layers huts, and little wood brahmins, sheltered huts they used to have at various places along the line. They want to put three of those on the decking area, which is at the top of the uh, top of the plan there next to the barbecue area. Um, as far as we're concerned, they're just replacing existing facilities with revised facilities. It's not to actually increase the, what's happening now. Um, 
So on that basis, where various issues have been mentioned about um, traffic, etc., our view is this way will not change anything because what's there is already there and it's just going to be replaced with something else instead. That's the pictures that are there now. There are some pictures that show that they have started some of the work in terms of removing some things and putting in platters um, and some of the decking is in obviously as well there. Um, but having said all that, I don't think that's a major issue for us in terms of do the planters even require a planning permission could be a dividable point. It's just a bit of landscaping basically within, within the garden area. So having said all that, our view is that although there's been issues raised by the parish council, and no doubt we'll hear more about in a minute about traffic issues, that there isn't going to change anything over the situation now. So even if you were to refuse this application, I don't know what you would actually refuse it on, um, what's there is already there. The people who are coming to the site are already coming to the site. And when they have a canopy that looks like that one there now, or one that looks like a railway station canopy isn't really going to make a great deal of difference. How these whether they sit in what looks like a flat man's hood, or whether they sit outside on those trestle tables that are more traditional for foot gardens, we don't think it really makes any significant difference. You'll also see references being made to a car park which is being proposed to cross the road. These are retrospective applications, we have had it for about a year. Basically, it's been to and fro and backwards and forwards to the county council who keeps saying they want this changed, they want that changed. But effectively, from what I've seen on the file, there is an agreed solution that might keep the county council happy. But I'm also told by officers who've worked here a long time that um, chances are they could possibly apply for a certificate of lawfulness and say they've actually been using that as an overflow path for more than 10 years anyway. Um, so they might not even need planning permission, so the requirements of the county council uh, might not be able to be delivered or necessarily need to be delivered. So I think when you factor all that in, whilst I'm not saying there might not have been problems on the occasional, should we say, events like fireworks, the thing that's been mentioned, this isn't actually going to change anything. It's just basically changing the canopy and changing the seats for what's already there, just swapping it for a different design. So on that basis, Chairman, we recommend approval. Okay, two speakers. Mrs. Barber is against them. Yes, I am. Um, and I do disagree with a lot of what's been said. I am the nearest neighbour to uh, the Brampton Hall pub. Um, and despite being the nearest neighbour, we had no communication whatsoever from Daventry District Council that this planning application had actually been put in. Um, so unfortunately... Excuse me interrupting, yes. we've we'll had the second time. Can you show us where you live? I live at Humphreys Lodge Farm, yeah. which is about, which is opposite Sedgebrook Hall. Ah, so it's the one which on connects, the right. Yes, okay. that's right. Thank you. Um, so unfortunately, we've come to this late in the day, and I don't have photographs showing you the severity of the parking problems that are already there. We do, however, have some photographs showing that the work on this project is already well underway with the decking, etc. Um, our main concern is the parking issue, which is one I'd like to address first of all, and then I have a real problem with the noise coming from this venue. I see from the planning notes that overspill parking for the pub is under consideration. This field has in fact been um, used by the pub for a number of years, not 10, that has been quoted. I've lived at the property for 25 years, so I do know what goes on over there. Um, I know that it's been closed by the Highways Agency. Um, there has been problems with um, how traffic enters and leaves this particular field. Um, even when the pub has got this facility back and it's available for parking, there is still insufficient parking for this particular premises. When all identified parking is full, patrons park on the only footpath available in both directions, either side of the pub, and this can be up to 200 yards away from the pub itself. Pedestrians are then using Pittsford Road and have to walk in the carriageway because there is no pavement left. The pub is situated on a 50 mile an hour road, a steep hill going down to the pub on one side and a blind bend on the other. The field with retrospective planning is opposite the pub, 
large groups of people often seen just running across this 50 mile an hour road, an accident waiting to happen. Bonfire night particularly scary, cars parked on both sides of the road, leaving room for one line of traffic to move. Nowhere to pull in, no street lighting, people walking down the middle of the road in the dark, it was complete chaos. There's clearly insufficient parking even now for an event of this size. Noise is the second biggest issue for us. Live bands are a particular problem. The music is so loud we can hear every word that is sung. We have to close doors and windows. Also, people leaving the pub late at night, constantly waking us, shouting, doors banging, engines revving, etc. Twice this month we've been woken up at 4.30am in the morning because a lorry has turned up to take away skips full of empty bottles. Police say they echo the parking concerns but they accept that this application will not exacerbate the problem. We strongly disagree with this. The whole parking debacle is just waiting for an accident to happen. This parking problem has existed for years. It needs to be addressed before permission is granted for anything else at the pub that will bring an increase in traffic to already what is a very, very busy and dangerous area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Alday for the Parish Council. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, and member of the committee. Um, I'd like to refer to those overlays that you just put up there, where you say that there's no increase in seating. If you see where the semicircular area is, at the moment there are set single tables and two chairs there. They're being re re replaced by benches. The chairs and tables at the moment, there are chairs and tables all over the bit where the railway carriages are going to go, and they're all moving into the middle. And then there's new railway carriage seating going in there. So there is most definitely an increase in the number of um, seating uh, capacity there. Um, you've received our concerns. We echo the concerns of the householder. Um, so there really will be an extension of seating. At the entrance of the site, there are a few parking places provided some years ago by NCC for the walkers of the Brampton Valley Way, which are frequently occupied by customers of the Holt. Further in, there's parking and field parking for the Pittsford and Brampton Railway. Yes, the field over the road did used to be an overflow car park, but it's not big enough for the amount of traffic that comes to the pub at the moment. As the general public will often choose the nearest point to the venue, that's frequently the Pittsford Road, which causes chaos and becomes very dangerous with cars travelling at over 60 miles an hour and 50 in a minute. Basically, is it possible that the parking availability by the Holt can be audited by highways and compared to the NCC parking standards. When our local pub was granted permission for a restaurant, a restaurant of 65 square metres floor area required 22 car parking spaces for customers and two for staff permanently available. And would it be possible for a recommendation of double yellow lines on the Pittsford Road for some considerable distance to stop people parking either side where, uh, and cutting off the pavement? Thank you, Well, if I might come back, actually, before members start the debate, I have made a note of all the points raised by the speakers. Um, I have to say, what's been discussed would appear to be, on the face value, to be matters that are not something for the planning committee to consider. Um, some of the issues you've talked about may relate to licensing, because it's a licensed premises. So I can certainly look at that and speak to the licensing officer to see if there are any restrictions, conditions on the license that are being breached. Um, from an environmental health point of view, if there are, if you've had issues with noise, I can only encourage you to report those, and we can, we can get that investigated by the environmental protection team. Because certainly, if you shouldn't be um, suffering from noise at 4:30 in the morning, and if bands are playing in any licensed premises anywhere. Near neighbours shouldn't be um, exposed to noise in the home um, of certain decibels. The Road Joint Action Group, which is a partnership, which is one of the groups that the Community Safety Partnership operates, made up of Northamptonshire Highways, the, the police, and our own community safety team, do regularly look at um, hot spots on the, on the road and work together with other partners, including the parishes, to try and resolve that. 
So if you have concerns, highways concerns, on actually existing use of the road network around that public house, then I would urge you to put that, you know, put something together and refer that through to Kevin Fay, who, who can refer the matter to the joint road joint action group. Um, and then, I mean, specifically, there's Northamptonshire County Council highways on, on things that relate purely to highways. But looking purely at the two pictures, it certainly, on the face of it, doesn't look to be any changes to the area that's licensed. Um, the site, although tables and chairs, there might be more or less. And I'm sure my colleagues to my left will correct me if I'm wrong, but actually the space available for those tables and chairs isn't changing, so I don't think how they lay out their tables would be a matter for planning. I don't think there's anything we can do, really, about portable chairs, if you like. Um, Obviously, people could turn up there and bring picnic groups or whatever and sit in the fields adjacent to it, and there's just nothing we can do about it. I mean, it seems a shame, really, that um, as we've heard, we've got, a, we've got a pub here in a rural area, which seems to be a victim of its own success, really, and uh, just up the road in Pittsford, we've got somebody trying to shut the police pub down because they say they don't get any business. Um, so here we've got a successful business, and, and now effectively it seems to be causing problems, but as I say, this particular application in our view is just a different canopy, a permanent canopy over the barbecue and cooking area, on these three sheds to replace tables and chairs. But I don't think we can say we can't have any more tables and chairs because it's not something we can control anymore than we need planning permission to put tables and chairs in the foot garden. It is a foot garden and they can put in it what they want to put in it. That's our difficulty. Um. You made a comment also on the speakers about the Rio Lions. As a parish, all you've got to do is contact your uh, local surveyor, which is probably Ian Smith or Ian Boys, I would guess, and ask for the Rio Lions. I'm sure he will support your application. Um, unfortunately, County only put them in once a year, though. But um, I'm sure they will listen to you. Right, over to local member. It must be you, Councillor. It Lundgren. is. Thank you very much, Chair. When I first read this, it, 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 it seemed you know, very straightforward, as I think the officers have said, but as you delve deeper into it, as has been apparent by the speakers and my own personal knowledge of the area, that, that, that there are a lot of issues and a lot of problems. I think Maria has very succinctly said that a lot of them, as I really came to the conclusion, are planning issues, but I'm glad that they've been raised and that you've taken note of them for future action. I can only commend the parish council, as I'm sure they would expect me to say, to follow through on their side of that particular one. The bit that does slightly concern me though, and uh, uh, Keith has said there's nothing we can do, is, is the increase in the seating. The reason I, I'm concerned with that is because it is shown on the plans as an increase in seating on a planning application. Therefore, I would have thought it, it comes within the purview of this committee to consider whether that is an increase in capacity. My other question is really, um, what are our parking policies with regard to pubs? Do we have a standard, like we do with houses, saying one and a half, two, whatever it happens to be? Do we have a policy on parking spaces for public houses? We do have a policy <coughs> on parking spaces for public houses, but it's generally based on the actual built-up area of the pub itself and the accommodation within the pub. As I'm saying, the difficulty here is if they bring in more chairs on outside, that doesn't require planning permission. They've just got a patio area. There's no way we can go in and suddenly say, well, you, you increase the number of deck chairs, if you like, on the patio, so there's more customers, so you've got to provide more parking because they don't need planning permission. So it might be better to go through the licensing where they've got okay, a right. number of people they're supposed to cater for. That might be a better way of doing it. Yeah, and oh. the only, I, mean, I mean, that is a separate regime. Yes. And the only way an existing license be reviewed is if the statutory body puts through, calls for a review with evidence that something needs to be changed or that there's a problem um, regarding one of the four licensing objectives. So it's certainly not straightforward. But leading on from that, that issue then, are we certain that this uh, public house actually complies existing, existingly, currently, sorry, with the parking conditions of a pub of its size and its popularity? Because I've been there and not been able to park and they've just well, driven off. Yeah, um, the short answer is I don't know because I haven't done the calculation, but obviously when they had extensions in the past, I think I dealt with 
a long time ago now to the actual original building. They definitely would have complied at that point because that would have been checked at that point. As I say, they've had the, the outside patio area and the scene on the planning history there was a mark here, etc. Um, yes. I don't know, to be perfectly honest, if the car parking was ever increased. What I do remember was there was also another planning application which isn't referred to in the planning history but goes back to 2003 where it says there was a formation of the lake, etc., the timber walkways and the various other things. And again, at that time, I'm pretty sure there was an increase in the parking that was provided back in 2003, but that may well have been prior to this barbecue area becoming quite as popular as it seems to have done. Um, but there certainly was supposed to be a shared car park with the railway visitors, as we've said, and there were issues back then, I remember. But having said that as well, now we've got this issue of the other car park across the road, which is where provided as additional car parking, and they have used it in the past. So I think there does seem to be some support for the fact that on occasions, and I don't know how many occasions, it does get quite, quite full. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Robson. Uh, thank you, Chair. I was just going to ask if we, officers, we just backtrack a minute and tell me, being a simple person, what are they actually applying to do? If you don't need planning permission to alter anything, what are they? Yeah, basically they're putting they're putting this canopy that so looks like a station canopy, as you see that at the bottom there, over the utter structure effectively. And these are the cuts with we've signed these these so cuts. Putting, putting they're over a receiving area. Yeah, yeah, thank well, you. It's, it's that's, a bit right. That's yeah. existing. It's got a tent yeah. there. They're replacing the tent basically with the um, with this permanent station type mm -hmm. canopy. So it's this top right corner. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got it. So that, that's, that's effectively yeah. it. It's the purpose of getting on the decking area where there's three, three things, at least three, three yeah. huts that are supposed to <coughs> look like runway huts. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Wesley. Yeah, I think just uh, sort of, I think I just have to agree with uh, what the officers are telling us here. Um, I, I do sympathise. Uh, with a local resident, um, it does get extremely busy. You do go there fairly regularly. You see uh, the railway with my with my bicycle for my sins, but then it does get absolutely packed. And um, you can't legislate how many people are going to turn up into a pub garden at any one point. I mean, I've been there. People have literally been sitting on brick walls and uh, perched on the side of uh, perched on the side of plant pots. And uh, whether the canopy goes out, it just make make them more comfortable. But if it's a popular pub, it's a popular pub. And, um, and and I'll just go go back to the to the other issues, and they're outside uh, they're outside what we're talking about here, and, uh, and I think we have to. Uh, I think I'd just like to propose that we do accept the uh, the office of advice on this, and we do uh, and accept the uh, and accept the uh, proposal. Right, second that. Right, we've got a proposal on the second. Now. Anybody else wish to speak? If not, we have a proposal on the sec second that the application be approved. But we have an officer that is looking into various things. The parish council have been advised what they can do as well. Uh, all those in favour of, uh, of the approval, please show. Those against. And one abstention. That. Yeah. Okay. The application is approved. <laughs>